So welcome everybody. Thank you for participating in these info meetings. Um, here with me is Sonia Schenkel. Good morning. Sonia is the person who is going to give us the filmmaking support, and me myself, I'm Samantha Robledo, the project, the synthesis coordinator for the whole r for d program. So thank you all for participating in this info meeting. Next, please. So what we are going to do today is uh, we'll short introduce ourselves and the project. Then uh, we will tell you what we need from you and what you are going to get from us in order to be able to produce the digital storytellers. Telling us. Um, we will have at the end a question session and finally we will tell you what are the final steps. We think that we are going to need something like one hour. Tomorrow there is another info meeting and this meeting is being recorded so that you can spread the news uh, with other members of your team. If you have questions, please write them in the chat. You find the chat on the upper right part of the Samantha. Yes. Samantha, um, you're breaking yes. up. a little bit. I Yeah, the sound is very good for me. As I can also hear very well. Okay, Sara, yes, you can all hear something Yes, I'm here now. Okay, okay, okay. So, sorry, just continue. Oh, thank you, Claudia. So, if you have questions, please use the chat on the right of a part of your computer and write the question to to the manager. Claudia, who is assisting us with the meeting, will cluster your questions at the end of the session. Okay? Next, please. Claudia, next, please. Great. Okay. In the synthesis of the R4D program, the steering committee agreed to have four main topics of synthesis. The first is the contribution of the whole program to the SDG to the 2030. The second is the ways of for maximizing impact. So we want with these two first topic is to understand what the program has done. And then topic number three and number four are related to how we are doing that. So what we have learned of doing research on complexity and how the partnerships in the program have support this process. These are the four topics for the whole R4D program synthesis. Next, Claudia. Next, please. Thank you. Okay, no, today we are going to talk about the first topic, how we are going to synthesize the contributions that the R4D program is given to the 2030 agenda. And of course, we note that most of your projects were designed prior to the SDG and the Agenda 2030, but we are convinced, and you also told us, that the projects are already contributing to many of these SDGs. So the Digital Storytellers Project is a project aimed at documenting your story about how your projects are contributing to the SDGs. What we want to know is really tell us your story and tell it to the world. Next, please. Uh, 
sell it to whom? So what we are going to do now in the next month with this digital storytelling project is to put together the material to tell the public, the policymakers, the negotiators, the civil society, and also the scientific community what you have done, what you have done in order to contribute to achieving these development pathways. Next, please. How we are going to do it, we think, we are convinced that by telling, by you telling your stories through video clips, we can build up very nice stories from the whole program. We are convinced that you have a lot to say and we think that we jointly can develop video clips telling in a short format as many stories as you want of how you think that your projects have contributed to the Agenda 2030. As you can say, these are these will be pieces coming from your projects that will be used for building up short films um, that will be interested for all these different communities. And in order to be able to do that, we have the support of Sonia and her team. They are going to help all of us getting into this video clips production of storytelling Storytelling from your project. So I hand on to Sonia. Thank you very much, Carmenza. I am Sonia Schenkel. Um, could we have the next slide, please? <clears throat> Would be good to have the next slide. Yeah, wonderful. Here we go. So you have a picture of me on the left hand side. Uh, I'll be leading this project, and but there are three of us, and we are spread uh, over Switzerland and Bolivia. So we are working from Switzerland, but we also have an office in La Paz. And in La Paz, there's going to be mainly Martin Moll on the right-hand side, uh, leading the editing process. And Nicole Schwab, who's in the middle, is advising us on the e-learning part. And just to give you a little bit of background, why we are so happy to be part of this project is because this is actually our own DNA, because all of us are scientists. I myself have a PhD in development studies, but we're also artists, uh, specifically filmmakers. I've been uh, assisting universities and foundations and NGOs for the last 20 years as a filmmaker, basically with this uh, heart of an artist, mind of a scientist, or vice versa. So it will, our, will be our great interest to really meet you in your concerns regarding what it takes to translate your knowledge into acceptable and appealing short videos. Um, next slide, please. Let's start with the basics of the journey. What does it take from you? Basically, what we need from you is what we call an SDG story, a Sustainable Development Goal story. Uh, Carmen has already mentioned this. It's basically this idea of finding ways in which way your current research relate, relates and contributes to the SDGs. And what is important to know is that within your project, if you have more than one idea, if suddenly five of you want to kind of put forward an SDG story, you're very welcome to. We welcome more than one uh, digital storytellers project within your project. So as many as you like, please come forward. But we also need your commitment as our partner because this is going to happen in the framework of what we call participatory filmmaking, which means that you will walk away from this process with a new skill. 
And it's actually a conscious choice to do that because we believe that as researchers, your team will highly profit from these new skills of knowing more about media production. And uh, could we have the next slide so I can tell you more about how this may happen? Thank you. So <clears throat> basically there are four phases. There's a preparation phase, there's a filming phase, uh, there's an editing process, and finally there's a dissemin dissemination and follow-up phase. And throughout this process, we're basically here to assist you. So you will never be alone trying to figure out something, but will always be there. There's an extra email that we've set up where you can always reach us, plus we will have um, a WhatsApp or a, a Slack channel uh, during the filming so that when you're in the field then you encounter an unknown challenge so that you can actually reach out. So the preparation phase starts basically with your letter of intent. You can find this document already online on the, the web page. Uh, it details very much what you will receive from us so that you can be sure that you can really rely on these services. At the same time, it also gives you an overview what you will need to plan for. And usually what happens when look, people look at the process, they actually already go through the first learning phase. They kind of realize what it takes to do a film. So let me tell you that many of these steps, if you are, are a very busy researcher, many of these steps can be outsourced to people who may be a bit less qualified than you. Because, because some of them are things that can be done by anyone, also an assistant. And some will take, of course, your creative input, meaning your leadership that you will say, okay, this is what we want to tell, this is our main idea, this is our priority. So after we have this letter of intent, which is basically our little agreement that we go on this journey together, we will kick off in March with the first set of uh, information material that will help you identify your SDG story. Meaning that if you right now do not have a, like a very clear idea of what you want or how this could be framed, but you do sense motivation to step into this project, you may do so. So you may actually start and, and say, okay, with this first material that we send out in March, I'm going to be able to focus better what I want to tell. Then, starting in May, we will have e-learning sessions. This means uh, we'll have three lessons that each have an assignment that you are uh, invited to. It's usually a 10-minute assignment, so the idea is really to test what we conveyed, not to kind of, you know, uh, give you a huge uh, extra work, but just to have the experience, to get a little try. If for some reason your schedule doesn't allow you to participate in the e-learning happening in May, you can always pick it up later in the year until December, because we will be editing your production until March next year. So whatever happens in December, you can also do the e-learning later. We will be available for you for your questions whenever you choose to enter into your learning process. Then, once you've gone through this e-learning, uh, we will be filming. The filming, which is important, will happen through your team. Until then, in phase three, we will join forces again for the editing process, which means you will order and label the film material that you've collected, and you will be able to send it to us. Uh, to Switzerland or Bolivia, this we will figure out on a specific uh, basis. What is important to know is that we will be editing your material according to your ideas uh, and send it back to you for feedback. And this will happen two to three times. 
This means that although you are giving us your raw material, you're not losing control. You can give feedback as if this was a commissioned project. And then eventually in phase three, once we have all signed off your video clip, we will disseminate this on the knowledge platform, the R4D knowledge platform. And of course, you're most welcome to use these video clips for your own communication purposes. Having said this, with regards to ownership of the material, you will be able to remain with all raw material and produce further productions with this. So basically, this gives you uh, an opportunity to fill, to fill two needs. On the one hand, you will be present with your video clip on the R4D knowledge platforms and all related events and channels. And at the same time, you can take this material and use it for the communication uh, strategy of your specific project. So, could I have the next slide, please? The role of BIPP Lab, our role is threefold, and I've already mentioned it uh, as, I, as I went through the process. It's basically one of training you, it's one of supporting you throughout, but it's especially also one of service, meaning that we will bring in our professional knowledge um, to make you look good to make this, to create the best possible quality for this video clip in collaboration with you. Um, can I have the next slide, please? A note on equipment. So to the left, you see Buster Keaton in the film, The Cameraman. This is not the kind of equipment that we will be working with. We will be working with whatever is available in your institutions. This includes smartphones, though we will ask you to use, in any case, an external microphone. If you happen not to have any access to equipment whatsoever, we will assist you to purchase this equipment, and this equipment will be traveling from your project coordinator in Switzerland to the respective project. So, in any case, you will be able to do this project no matter what. Equipment should not pose you a limit. With regards to what is available, and if you're unsure if, you, if your equipment is modern enough, good enough, etc., do not worry about this because at the end of the letter of intent, you find uh, technical data, like a technical survey, where we ask you to state the model of the camera that you have at hand or the smartphone. So it will be up to us to take this responsibility and tell you, yes, you can go ahead with this camera. This will record good quality video that we can work with, that can be shown on big screens. Because what we do, we do not only produce for the web, we also produce for large presentations. And we will make sure that we, your video will have adequate quality for you. So to conclude, um, I look forward to your receiving your letter of intent. We have set the deadline of 28th of February, so there's time to consult with your teams and to decide. As I previously mentioned, do not worry if you're not completely sure of what you want to talk about. Give us a raw idea and we will take it from there. And if we could go to the last slide, please. Yes. So here you see a, an email that we set up so that you can send your letter of intent. Or if you have any other questions that we that may come up after this meeting today, please feel free to get in touch.